ZX students, welcome to the series on PYQs. NSCP exam is just around the corner, I can see that. And this is the time that you have to practice a lot of previous year questions. And here is the series on that. So today we'll talk about the electricity and we will solve a few questions based on, not based on actually, yeah, based on electricity, but the ones that actually appeared in previous year question papers. So my name is Bhavdeep Sethi. I have been converting physics haters into physics lovers. And I always say never, never, never memorize physics because physics is such a beautiful subject. You can learn it conceptually. Now, with due respect to the textbooks, I always say that the nature is the best textbook out there. Textbooks are great. They teach you concepts. But the problem is most of them do not tell you where to use those concepts. If you're learning with nature, you're actually learning with application of those concepts. So learn with nature and you will master and conquer whatever your goals are. So what not to expect from today's session? And usually the sessions start with what to expect today, but we'll start with what not to expect today. There's only one thing you should not expect is that is spoon feeding. If you're expecting that I'm going to show you a question, tell you all the steps and you are going to write them down, and then try to understand that we know that's not happening. We'll take a question, I'll give you the pointers, you solve them yourself, and then you, you post the solution in our Telegram channel. So, so that's, that's our Telegram channel, VOS Beyond Books Brigade. And also, so you can contact me on my Telegram, which will be posted here, Bhavdeep Singh Sethi. So that's my Telegram ID, you can, you can contact me there as well. So the very first question, let's deep dive into that. So that's coming from year 2005, 2006 paper. And the question says, they're giving you this and they're saying, okay, what is the value of R so that you have the maximum power output? So, so now this is a battery of E with an internal resistance of four ohms. Now, if, if you have been following my, my sessions, you know the maximum power is delivered when the external resistance is equal to the internal resistance. We have done that with common sense. You see my videos on that. So basically for maximum power, all this resistance network has to equal to four ohms. Now, how much is this? I mean, it's, it's a little complicated, but if you step back, look at the bigger picture. See, I always say, if you look closely, maybe you will not be able to visualize what it is. You, you look from far away, oh, wow, that's a Wheatstone bridge. And it's, it's a balanced Wheatstone bridge. Because think about this, so this R over 2R, that's 1 is to 2 ratio, and this is 2R to 4R, this is also 1 is to 2 ratio. So if this is 1 is to 2, this is 1 is to 2, this middle one has no meaning because there is no current flowing through that. You can just remove that. So let's remove that with some white color here. That doesn't even exist. This does not exist, my dear friends. This does not exist. And as soon as you do that, you realize this branch and this branch, they are in parallel. So this entire thing of series of three R's and this one of six R, so this is three R and six R in parallel, total is two R. That two R has to be equal to, so we, are say, we can say that two R should be equal to four ohms. That means the value of R is two ohms. It's, it's very simple question done by common sense. Go into the next question. Let's see. A letter A is constructed of a uniform wire with resistance of 1 ohm per centimeter. The sides of the letter are 20 centimeters and the cross piece in the middle is 10 centimeters long. The apex angle is 60 degrees. The resistance between the ends of the legs is. First of all, we have to draw the picture. Now they're saying, the sides are 20 centimeters long, but then there is a resistance of one ohms per centimeter. One ohms per centimeter, 20 centimeters is 20 ohms. So what we know so far is this is 20 ohms and this is also 20 ohms. Now what they're saying is there is the, the between this thingy is a 10 centimeter long thing, but now I don't know where it is. It may be here, it may be here, it may be here. I, I really don't know. They have not told me that. So maybe it is somewhere here where this is 16 and 4 or maybe it is here where it is 10 and 10. I, I don't know. They have not given me that information. But there's another useful information here 
that this apex angle is 60 degrees and that calls for little trigonometry out there. So what they're telling me is that this angle is 30 degrees and this is also 30 degrees. Right. Now, now they say this middle one is 10 centimeters long. So look at the beauty, beauty of this. So if this is 10 centimeters, can I say the half of this here is five centimeters? This is five. So I know this part is five. This is five. Now this angle is 30. Think about this is opposite and this is hypotenuse. So I know sine 30, sine 30 is equal to opposite, which is five over this hypotenuse. So this is hypotenuse. Now sine 30 is one by two. So hypotenuse is 10. So I know this part is 10. If this part is 10, then this part is 10. So this angle tells me that this middle part is exactly at the center. And that is now easy question. Because now what I know is the letter looks like this is 10. This is 10. This is 10. This is 10. And this is 10. And once you do that, things are very easy. They're saying, okay, some current comes here. The current leaves here. How much is the resistance between those two? Now, now this is easy. So this 20 is in parallel to this 10. And this whole thing is in series to this and this. So let's simplify this. This is 20 and 10. So 20 and 10 in parallel will give you 20 times 10 over 20 plus 10. So that gives you 20 by 3, which is 6.67. So this part is 6.67. And this is 10. This is 10, 20 point, 26.67, which is actually rounded up to 26.7. So very easy questions there if you can kind of think about it. So NSCP exam has a mix of easy, medium, difficult. Now the next question here, when a current of 2 ampere flows in a battery from negative to positive terminal, wow, what a beautiful question. I love this question. So when a current of 2 ampere flows in a battery from negative to positive terminal, the potential difference across is 12 volts. But if a current of 3 ampere flows in the opposite direction, it produces a potential difference of 15 volts. The EMF of the battery is how much? Now before we solve this question, there is a confusion that many students have. Okay, by how can the current flow from you know from negative to positive or positive how is it possible because we have learned the current flows from positive to negative so what's going on here see when you're charging a battery don't you make the current flow in the other direction and when you do that your emf you know the voltage will be more than emf so let's let's understand that again so let's say there's a battery here and you try to use it putting some bulb here so let's say EMF is six volts, the potential terminal difference is going to be less than six, it may be 5.4, let's say, just for sake of understanding. But now when you try to charge the battery, so the current flows the other way, and now if you apply the Kirchhoff's law, that's something for you to solve and post it in the Telegram, and you know, send it to me or post it in the Telegram channel there. So when you try to charge the battery, the current flows the other way, the terminal voltage will be more than six now. And so that's, that's what is happening here. So now let, let's draw this. So I don't know the, the battery EMF. So let me draw a battery with some EMF, E. I, I don't know, they have not told me. Now there is an internal resistance. They haven't told me how much that is. So when a current of two amperes flows from negative to positive, so current is flowing this way of two amperes. So how much is the, is the potential difference with the, between the terminals, E minus IR, we know that, right? So we know E minus I, I is two times R is, they're saying that is equal to 12. Perfect, perfect. But now they say, what if you, you switch the direction of current? So, so let's say this is E, this is R, and this is going the other way. This is 3 amperes. Now you know the, the, the battery. So if you apply the Kirchhoff's law, you're going to get the potential difference between those two is E plus. Because think about it. You apply the Kirchhoff law. So again, I say, as I said, this is not a spoon feeding session. This is something where I give you the pointers because that's how you learn physics. So apply the Kirchhoff's law between these two. You will see what I mean. 
So E plus IR, that is plus 3R. So I, I'll write it here so that I have some room to, to solve it. So E plus 3R is equal to 15. So there are two equations, two variables. You solve them. You have to find E. Okay, let, let's solve it together anyway. So let's eliminate E. So this minus that is going to give you 5R is equal to 3. So that tells me R is equal to 0 0.6 ohms. We know the internal resistance just now. So you take this internal resistance, plug it in here. So that is 1.2, 13.2. That is your answer. And that is from NSCP 2005-2006. The next question, very beautiful question. Two cells of same EMF but of different internal resistance R1 and R2 are connected in series with an external resistance of R. The potential drop across the first cell is found to be zero. The external resistance R must be. So let's first draw the circuit here. So what they're saying is there is a battery here or a cell. So E is the EMF of the cell. And they say, okay, what if the, X, if the internal resistance is R1? Now there's another battery, it's connected in series. So that's another battery. And again, they're saying identical as in they have the same EMFs, E, but then the, X, the internal resistance is different. It is R2. And they say, okay, this is connected with an external resistance of R. Perfect. So they, okay, th this is the case. Now saying, when you do this, the potential difference between the, the first battery terminals is zero. Okay, let's, let's, before that, let's see how much is the current. So here there are two batteries working together. So this says, I'm trying to get the current flow in this direction. This says, okay, I agree with you. I'll, I'll make it go this way. So the total EMF is E. Now total resistance is R1 plus R2 plus R. So how much is the current? Current is 2E divided by this whole resistance. So, so let's write that down. So there is a current of 2E divided by R1 plus R2 plus R. That's the current. Now they're saying between these two terminals, there's no potential difference. So let's label them. So let's say this is point P and this is point Q. So let's go from P to Q. Let's go from P to Q. So I can say VP, that's where I'm starting. I'm just using Kirchhoff's law here. So this is VP, then you, you drop E because you think about you're going from bigger plate to smaller plate. So you lose E, I'm losing E here, but then you're going against the current. So you gain I R1, you gain it because you're going against the current. Current is going this way. You're going against the current. You gain I R1 plus I R1. And once you do that, you reach Q. So the, all this gives you Q, VQ. Now they're saying there's no potential difference between these two as in VP minus VQ is zero or VP and VQ are equal. So, okay, that's, that gives me this. So basically E minus IR1, so I'm just changing the signs here. So E minus IR1 is zero. So what is E? So let's write E here. E is E minus IR1. I is this. So minus 2E, so 2E. R1 and R1. So this is R1 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R. And all that is equal to zero. Or you can say, okay, this is equal to this. It's one and the same thing. That minus this is zero. So same thing. Now you can cross out this E, cross out this E. So what you get in the next step is R1 plus R2 plus R is equal to 2R1. So now you solve, if you take it on the other side, you get R1. So this R is equal to R1 minus R2. And that is that is your answer. You see how easy these questions are. But, but in the exam, it's more about the time. Also, you have to spend not more than 60 to 70 seconds on these questions. This is from year 2002-2003. Now this one, honestly, I don't know which year this appeared in, but this is one of my favorite questions. I love this question. And I lost track of which year this was. It's, it's a very beautiful question and see how easy it is. So again, we are not just solving questions here. We are actually learning how to understand a question, how to 
analyze it, how to solve it. We are learning the art of problem solving. It's not just, okay, we learned this question. So consider an infinite ladder network shown in this figure. Okay, good. A voltage V is applied between the two points A and B. This applied value of voltage is halved after each section. Find the value of R2 by R1. So they are saying we are applying a voltage of V here. So let's let's make it simple by saying this is zero volts and this is V volts. Now think about this. If this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, this is zero. After all, they are all con conducting wires. This is a superconductor maybe. I know this is a copper wire or aluminum wire, but for all practical purposes, we assume the resistance of these wires are, is zero. So if this is zero, the zero, 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 zero. Now if this is V, they're saying this applied value of voltage is halved after each section. Means if this is V, this is V by two, this is V by four. So to, for this to be V by two, this has V by two. That's how this will become V by two. And then this becomes V by four. And you see how it is reducing and it will never become zero. Obviously, it's an infinite ladder. It might become V over 2 to the power a billion or trillion, but it's still not zero. It's an infinite ladder. They're saying how much is the value of R2 by R1? Very easy. Now, thinking of it, okay, should I find the infinite? See, see when you come across these questions, the first thing that comes to mind is, what if I find the equivalent resistance and all that? No, you don't have to do all that. All you have to find is the, the ratios of R1 and R2. That would be known by finding the currents going through each of these. So you can apply the junction rule here. I can say whatever current comes here, some of it goes here, some of it goes here, obviously. So some current comes here, it is divided into this and this. So this current is equal to this current plus this current, junction rule. So what is this current? This current is the voltage across this divided by the resistance So this current here coming into this junction is so how much is the voltage between this resistance v by 2 see v minus v by 2 so v by 2 divided by r1 that's the current coming here so let's write it down we'll say okay v by 2 divided by r1 that comes here should be equal to this current how much is this current? how much is potential here so V by 2 minus V by 4, that is V by 4 is equal to V by 4 divided by this resistance. So that is R1. So divided by R1, which stays here, R1 plus this current. This current is potential here is V by 2 minus 0. V by 2 divided by R2. V by 2 divided by R2. So now there's nothing much left in this. So V's crossed out. All these V's will cross out. Now you can also cross out this two. So this becomes one, this two and this one. So this simplifies to uh, one by R1, one by R1 is equal to one by two R1, one by two R1 plus one by R2. Now one by two R1, so whole minus half is half. So basically what you're left with is one by two R1 is equal to 1 by R2. So R2 by R1, they are saying what is R2 by R1? So R2 by R1 is 2 by 1. That is that is your answer. So again, students, it's not about solving this infinite letter question. It's more about you are learning the art of problem solving. Looking at this, okay, what should I do? You step back. That's the best strategy. I say you step back and look at the bigger picture there. You will realize how simple these things are. Okay, so if that was easy, then you have to really share this video, subscribe to this channel and spread out the word. Now, if you're interested in joining any of the courses at Vedantu Olympiad School, there are links at below here. So Abhay sir is taking awesome sessions. Nidhi ma'am teaches at Vedantu Olympiad School. I take many sessions. So links are here. You can join NSCP courses given in the links, but stay tuned at, at this YouTube channel but promise to spread out the word. So I will see you soon. And I always end my session by saying, whatever is your goal in life, if you keep up the high josh, you will achieve those goals. So keep up the high josh, students. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Take care.